In this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to add a variety of different base maps according to your needs in QGIS. Now, when working with spatial data in GIS, base maps serve as the foundational layers that provide context to your analysis. Essentially, a base map is just a background map onto which you can overlay your own data, and uh, these maps typically contain important information like terrain, roads and boundaries, which can actually help you better understand and visualize the location and spatial relationships of your data. And base maps are quite crucial for any GIS related work or spatial analysis because they provide a reference that make your data actually meaningful. Now in QGIS, there are several ways of adding a base map with some methods being extremely simple and straightforward and as simple as they can get while some others being somewhat tricky and challenging. So in this tutorial, we're not going to complicate things. I'm going to show you just two easy and simple methods of adding base maps to your QGIS workspace. So in the recent versions of QGIS, just like what I'm using right now, and probably in the versions that are going to be released in the future, if you head over to your browser panel, which is right over here, under XYZ tiles, if you double click and expand this, you'll be able to find a couple of base map options uh, right over here. The one that's kind of guaranteed to be there is this one, which is this OpenStreetMap base map, which is a community driven project and a map layer that can provide very detailed uh, geographic information. So the quickest and the simplest way of getting a base map onto your workspace is through this XYZ tiles. If you just drag this and drop it over here, you can see that a layer of OpenStreetMap gets opened in your layers panel. Now you can just zoom in to any area of your interest and you can actually start seeing labels, geographic features and things of uh, importance that can be quite helpful as you can see from this map. And the coverage of this basically spans all across the globe. So any area of interest you can just basically zoom into and, and you can just start exploring at ease. So that's OpenStreetMap base map and you can see that there are actually a couple more options. Now depending on the version that you're using this may or may not be there. So as I just mentioned, the version that I'm using is this one right over here. And if you happen to use the same version, you probably would have access to these other options as well. So I'm going to drag and drop this uh, Google satellite map into my workspace as well. So you can see that it gets added on top of this open street map. So I could just go ahead and untick the open street map since we're just interested in the Google satellite base map. You can see that it's quite different in terms of the appearance because as the name suggests, this is supposed to provide a more realistic image of the earth rather than it being in a sort of a vectorized form. So if you zoom in, now you can actually start seeing the actual features, just like how you would get to see things if you were to view them from something like a drone, as you can see over here. So that's the Google satellite map. And you would also have access to this maps and global terrain layer as a base map as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and untick Google Satellite and let it load up. It might take a couple of seconds. So it's basically a global terrain map, uh, as you can see from here. May or may not be useful depending on your purposes. If you want to actually go ahead and uh, change the appearance of this, you can head over to Properties and if you go to Symbology and select a single band pseudo color from here, you probably might be able to assign a different color ramp to this because the variations in color is supposed to indicate the variations in elevation since it's a terrain map. So click apply and when you click OK, well, that might actually give you a bit more context and provide sort of a snapshot of how the elevations all across the globe happens to vary. So you can immediately notice something over here that the colors are quite dark just around Nepal, where Everest happens to be located at. And at the same time, you can see some areas around here in South America as well, having uh, rather high elevations. So by default, we would have access to these three base maps under XYZ tiles, at least in the version of QGS that I'm using right now. So if you want to probably take your base map game to the next level, what I can suggest is basically using an external plugin called Quick Map Services, which basically provides you with a plethora of base maps that most likely will satisfy your curiosity. So that's the second method basically that I'm going to discuss in this tutorial today. So to install Quick Map Services, all you have to do is just head over to Plugins and 
go to manage and install plugins and in here to install that plugin all you have to do is just search for it quick map services and that should be this one right over here so in this very brief description you can see some details about that plugin important things like what this plugin does and who the developers are this one is developed by Next.js. So to install this, all you have to do is just uh, click on this install plugin button. And after that, you can see that it didn't even take five seconds to get it installed. After that, you can just go ahead and close this. And uh, just to keep things clear, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this and right click and remove all the layers. So you can see that when I remove them, it just got removed from the layers panel, but under XYZ tiles, it's still there. So if you want to just quickly bring it back to your workspace, it's just as simple as that. So let's go ahead and remove this. And uh, since we install the quick map services, we can actually access that by heading over to web. And over here, you will see a new option called quick map services. And under quick map services, you also can see that they have included this OSM, which is the standard open street map, which we had right over here. So in case for some reason under XYZ tiles, if you happen to not have OpenStreetMap, which is highly unlikely, you can just simply go ahead and add OpenStreetMap through Quick Map Services as well. All you have to do is just select this option and that's going to add the same OpenStreetMap that we explored just a few minutes ago. A highly detailed base map that can be extremely useful in many cases. So as I told you guys, they actually do offer a lot more than this. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this and head back to web again and under quick map services you can head over to search quick map services. So if you're using this tool for the very first time you probably won't be seeing anything over here just like what I'm seeing right now. It's just a blank white screen. So what you can do is you can basically start searching for all sorts of maps. For example, let's say if I'm interested in adding a Bing map as a base map to my workspace. All I have to do is just search for Bing over here and it'll return to you a number of different available options. So right over here, you can see one option called Bing Map Satellite Imagery and you can just go ahead and click on this add button and that's going to add this sort of a Bing map as a base map to your workspace. So just like Google Maps, these are actually pretty highly detailed maps as well. In case if your curious mind is keen on comparing the differences between Bing Maps and Google Satellite Maps. All you have to do is just add this one to your workspace as well. You can essentially do a one-to-one -one comparison and see which one basically fit your purpose. Like this. And as you can see, the availability and the coverage is basically is similar with other base maps as well. And sometimes you might encounter this kind of presence of clouds as well, which can be a bummer sometimes. But yeah, that's the nature of uh, satellite imagery. And not only that, let's assume that you're interested in maybe adding a map from Esri. So just because you happen to use QJS, it does not limit you from actually adding a base map from Esri thanks to Quick Map Services. All you have to do is just search for Esri and it should return to you a number of different a number of different maps from S3 as well. So for example, let's say if I want to go with S3 terrain map, all I have to do is just click on this add button over here. And well, it gets added as a layer below my Bing map. So I'm just going to deactivate my Bing maps. And with that, you can actually start seeing the terrain map from S3. And similarly, if you're interested in maybe seeing how this S3 world imagery map looks, you can add that as well and uh, basically deactivate your S3 terrain map. And as you can see, it's pretty similar to the Bing map satellite imagery as well as the Google satellite map. As you can see, it's relatively high in resolution as well, which can be extremely useful. So in addition to that, you can even add things like S3 boundaries and places. If you click on add, you can see that it gets added below this S3 world imagery. If I go ahead and untick this, uh, you'll only start seeing just the text like this. So what you can do is you can still have this S3 world imagery layer activated and 
you can move this below these S3 boundaries and with that you can see that it perfectly align and starts showing us the boundaries and places just like what we expect. So even if you zoom in like this, now you can see that previously it didn't really have that uh, political boundaries or places marked on the map, but, but with this layer you now get to see, well, the political boundaries and uh, administrative boundaries and things like that, even within countries. So just like this, you can actually access base maps from quite a number of providers. For example, let's say if you search for Waze and uh, if you click on add, let's go ahead and see how that looks. So this is the map from Waze, which is a program that's used by a lot of people, especially when it comes to things like road navigation. So you can see how the base map from Waze happened to look. And you also have things like Yandex. If you want to check that out, for example, let's say the Yandex satellite map at that and see how that happens to look. So again, I would say that it's quite similar to the Google satellite and the Bing satellite map, just showing the earth in its raw form, just like what we would get to see if you're looking at uh, things like drone footages and stuff like that. Finally, before we wrap up this tutorial, just because we have Google satellite maps over here, that's not going to actually stop us from adding any Google maps through quick map services. So if you just happen to search for Google over here, you'll be given a bunch of different maps from Google as well. So for example, let's say if you want to add maybe Google terrain hybrid map or Google satellite hybrid map. So let's just go ahead with Google terrain hybrid and see how that looks. So this is how your Google Terrain hybrid map happens to look. Quite similar to the standard Google Maps that we are used to accessing uh, quite frequently. And the availability and coverage basically spans across the entire globe, just like this. So guys, that actually brings us to the end of this tutorial. As you can see, adding a base map in QGIS is not a problem at all. You have plenty of options and I just happen to pick two of those which are quite easy and straightforward. And I hope that the tutorial was useful for you guys. And as always, if you do have a question, just add a comment down below. And if you like what we're doing, show your support by hitting that like button. I'll see you guys again with another tutorial soon.